let's take a look at our top selections. Five graded stakes races on opening day at Santa Anita, Saturday, and the first grade one is race number eight. It's the grade one La Brea Stakes. Three-year-old fillies going seven furlongs, and this race, if you're looking for a price, this is the race to look at because uh, long shots have done very well in the La Brea, and favorites have been taking it on the chin. The last nine years, six La Brea winners paid more than $20. Favorites won only two of the last 10, and several of those beaten favorites have been relatively short prices. Last year, Bellafina, odds on, she lost. Two years ago, Dream Tree, odds on, she lost the race. Terrace in 2014, Sweet Lulu in 13, My Miss Aurelia, Turbulent Descent, four consecutive odds on favorites losing the Malibu. Now, there aren't any odds on favorites in this year's Malibu field, but I only bring it up because this is a race with the recent history of long shots. And by the way, five of those long shot winners that paid more than $20 were coming off of wins in their most recent start. So we as handicappers are misinterpreting the sharp Phillies chances moving up in class. Let's go ahead and take a look at the field for the grade one La Brea. It's race number eight, seven furlongs, a field of 11 entered the race and the favorite a very tepid favorite, I might add, is number five, Finite, trained by Steve Asmussen. Asmussen has come to town with a couple of very good ones for the opening day card. Finite in the La Brea, Nashville in the Malibu. And Finite, who has returned to her good form. She defeated Older last time out in a grade three one-turn race at Churchill Downs. Here's an interesting tidbit regarding Steve Asmussen. He has started 16 horses. There's the rest of the field, by the way. Stellar Sound actually has a chance. She's coming back in 20 days after an impossible trip last time out. It was kind of a screwed up race. That was the Bayako. She broke slow. Her jockey uncorked a middle crazy suicidal move. She made the lead and then she completely fell apart. Stellar Sound's coming back in 20 days. Back to Steve Asmussen, who is the trainer of Finite. Steve Asmussen, a deserving Hall of Fame trainer. We all know that. They're good trainers, sometimes have defects in their form. And if there is one in Steve Asmussen's recent form, maybe it's seven for long grade stakes races at Santa Anita. Why do I say that? Because Asmussen has started 16 runners in graded stakes races going seven furlongs at Santa Anita. He's 0 for 16 with three seconds and three thirds. It's probably a statistical aberration. And I'm not going to talk anybody off of finite because she's trained by Asmussen. <laughs> Asmussen trainees are reliable. They hold their form. The question with finite, is she really good enough to ship all the way out to California and defeat a good bunch of local sprint fillies in a race that has a recent history of upsets. I'm going to say if she wins, I'm going to lose. That's all there is to it. There are several candidates in this race that could potentially post an upset, including my top choice in the race. And she's number six, Biddy Duke. And she is listed at 12 to one. And I can't wait to bet on Biddy Duke at a big price. She's not a cinch by any stretch of the imagination. But she has a couple things in her favor. She won her last start. She's a big price. And trainer Doug O'Neill ended the Los Alamitos meet absolutely on fire. Eight one-two finishes from his last 12 starters, including several prices. So what about Biddy Duke's recent form? Well, she hasn't started in two months. That's okay. Last time out, it was in the grade three Ken Matty at Santa Anita on grass and Biddy Duke on the outs, uh, actually down on the inside and with the red shadow roll. And she's going to fight off Jojo air, the length of the lane. Jojo air is a pretty good filly from the East coast and Biddy Duke refused to let her get by Biddy Duke. This was a grass race, but Biddy Duke is just fine on the main track. In fact, she has won six out of 18 on dirt. So Biddy Duke defeated older fillies and mares last time out in a graded stakes race. You could say she's dropping in class into an age-restricted race on Saturday. Not really, but it's technically correct because it's a restricted race. Biddy Duke has tactical speed. She can run on dirt. 
O'Neill is red hot right now, and the odds for Biddy Duke at 12 to 1. And she should, even if she gets bet down a little bit, I don't see her starting at less than six or eight. That still might be good enough. Plus, she won her last start. So I like Biddy Duke to possibly post an upset. And if it's not her, what about number three, Hamiko? Hamiko was kind of a bust early in her, her career. She's a daughter of American Pharaoh, and she's a sibling to grade one winner Bodie Meister. But it took her a long time to get her act together. But once she did, boy, the light bulb certainly went on. She won a maiden race two starts back. And then last time out at Del Mar in a one other land then, let's take a look at Hamiko reproducing her maiden win, this time against first-level allowance fillies and mares. And Hamiko just ran off the screen. She won by more than six lengths. She earned a 93 buyer speed figure, and she looked like a filly that might have a little bit more to give. A 93 buyer speed figure, by the way, on Hamiko, who is listed at eight to one, happens to be the exact same number that Finite earned last time out winning the grade three Chaluki at Churchill Downs. So my point is this, Hamiko at eight to one with the exact same figure, last out figure as the morning line favorite finite. So Hamiko is in form, trained by Baffert. He has four in the race and I like her chances to outrun her odds. Okay, finally, what about Merneath and Motivated Seller? They finished one, two last time out in a minor stakes race at Keeneland on Breeders' Cup weekend. Let's go ahead and roll the tape on this little stake race. It's the Qatar Fort Springs Stakes, and that's Merneath on the far outside. Merneath is kind of like Himiko in a way. She was kind of a bust early in her career, but she has put it all together, and Merneath will grind out the win over Motivated Seller. I'm not sure what this race really means. All it really shows is that these two fillies are in good form and Merneath has found a way to turn into a racehorse. She's now won three out of eight and she is on her way up. That race was kind of a low rated race, an 86 buyer speed figure, but both Merneath and Motivated Seller are in form. This is a race that I would not mind at all taking a shot at a price and there are many possibilities in this race. I didn't even talk about number four secret keeper who was eliminated in the Raven run last time out when she broke, when she stumbled badly at the break, she's good enough based on her runner up finish to harvest moon earlier this year. You got a couple of more Bob Baffert trainees. Finite is solid stellar sound back in three weeks, 20 days. But when all is said and done, I might actually end up betting two horses in the same race if they both start at prices and they should. I like Biddy Duke, my top selection at 12 to 1. And Hamiko, Bob Baffert's probably less regarded of, of his quartet to possibly outrun her odds as well. So the La Brea Stakes, let's hope that the long shot trend continues and either Biddy Duke with a pressing trip or Hamiko also with a pressing trip. A couple of locally based fillies can upset Steve Asmussen trained Finite, who is definitely qualified to win this race. It's the La Brea Stakes. Looking for Biddy Duke to outrun her odds. Going seven furlongs, race number eight, Saturday at Santa Anita.